Brought to you by My Green Egypt, green resources for efficient energy. Hello guys to this new video series. Today in this video, we are here to discuss an important communication protocol in industry, automation, and definitely in solar energy generation called Modbus. So, what is Modbus? Modbus is a serial communication protocol originally designed and published by Modicom, the inventor of programmable logic controllers, BLCs, now owned by Schneider Electric. This protocol is pretty simple and also a robust means to connect electronic devices in industry. And because it is easy to implement, royalty-free, and also designed specifically for industrial applications, Modbus found its way to virtually every product aimed to be used in industry. Among them for sure, solar energy products. Nowadays, you virtually can't find a device like a VFD, a temperature sensor, and often a decent solar inverter without a way to connect it over Modbus. Products like SMA Sunboy, INVT solar inverters, and many more employ as a standard Modbus as a way for communication. This series will implement Modbus RTU as an embedded library in Atmel AVR MCUs and also in Atmel SAM Cortex M3R microcontrollers to be used later on in our solar inverters and battery chargers. Modbus is a hardware um, protocol when it's being described um, and being drawn on the OSI model. It lays in the hardware layer. And um, um, Modbus basically contains, uh, the Modbus frame contains plenty of fields. The first field is the address field. And then you have uh, the function code, the data, and then you have the um, CRC. The function code and the data is called the Modbus PDU. And the address field is a one pipe field that is used by the master to address one of the slaves. So Modbus is, is used on plenty of uh, network topologies. One of them is RS232, uh, where you have one master and one slave. Since you have only one line for called RS, and one line called TX. So you, you can't put multiple slaves on the same network. But in RS485, you have one master, and you have multiple slaves, S2, S3, and then you have a bus, where the master can put a message on the bus and then one of the slaves is going to respond or none of the slaves are going to respond as we are going to see later in the address field. So the address field, the master will try to put a value in this address field. This value represents the address of one of the slaves and then the message is being sent to one of the slaves. So the slave will receive the message, analyze it and if there is no error the slave will respond with a response message. And also the master can put zero in this field. Zero means that the master is broadcasting the message to all the slaves in the network. In this network topology, if two or more slaves are going to respond at the same time, then the message is going to be corrupted. So you can't put more than one message physically at the same time on one bus. So the function code. The function code contains the number of the function that the, the Modbus supports. Modbus supports plenty of functions. For example, when you want to write a holding register inside one of the slaves or inside multiple the slaves connected to the network. Or uh, when you want to read one of the coil. A coil represents a bit inside the slave. You would assign a code to each one of those functions. And putting that code inside the function code parameter allows the slave to know the type of action it is going to take uh, in response to this function. Then you have the data field. The data field is the parameter that the, the function requires, like the, uh, the addresses inside the, uh, uh, the register uh, space, 
the, the value being written to every one of those registers or bits inside the slave. And then last, you have the CRC. The CRC field is two bytes field. It's called cyclic redundancy check. And in this field, you try to preserve the integrity of the data inside the frame. So a master would construct the frame and then it would calculate the CRC value for the frame and it would send the CRC value uh, with the frame. And the slave would do the same, would calculate the CRC value for the received frame and if the slave doesn't find that the CRC value equals the CRC value sent by the master, then the slave would know that this frame is corrupted and it would discard it and it would go back to idle mode. This is a document, uh, I, uh, the document called Modbus Over Serial Line Specification and Implementation Guide. They will guide you through the steps that you would need in order to implement Modbus, RTU, and ASCII inside of one of your uh, microcontroller devices. So, um, this is a suggested uh, diagram, state diagram, for you if you want to implement a master Modbus library and in this suggested uh, state diagram you have the idle state which is the state when you start your device you have to PN and in this state the master is waiting for the software inside it to initiate a request when the master receives a, uh, an order to um, initiate a request to one of the slaves the master would leave the idle state and it would go to waiting to turn around delay state and um, the master would wait uh, for a period of time oh, before, before it goes to wait for turn around delay the master has to uh, initiate a broadcast request since the master is not expecting any of the slaves to respond in a broadcast request it will initiate a timer waiting for a turn around delay and after this timer uh, rolls back to zero, the master would return to the idle state. But, if the master is sending a request to a particular slave, then the master would initiate a different timer. This timer is called a re request or reply timeout. The, 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 uh, the master would wait for the slaves or the uh, addressed slave to respond, and if the slave doesn't respond during this period of the uh, uh, reply timeout period, then the master would initiate an error and go back to idle state. But if one of the slaves, if the slave addressed uh, answered the, uh, the request, then the master would process, process the reply and then it would go to, back to idle. It's pretty simple implementation of Modbus. So let's move to um, the slave state diagram. Also, it contains the idle state. The slave st stays in this state, but unlike the master, the slave can't leave this state unless it, receives, unless it receives a request. The slave would wait in this state uh, indefinitely until the master, until it receives a request from the master. Then the slave would check the request. If the request is being directed to this particular slave, i.e., the address field of the request equals the address field of the slave or the address of the slave then the slave would uh, prepare a response to the master and then it will respond to the master and then it will go back to the idle state or if the request was a broadcast request then the slave would um, store the value in, in the broadcast request and then it will go back to idle state but if the slave discovered an error inside the message and that error is a framing error, a CRC error, then the slave would uh, process the error, store the, the state that uh, an error occurred and then it will go back to idle state. But if the error was inside the message, for example, um, the master sent an unsupported request to the slave, the slave is allowed to respond with an exceptional, an exception response and this response would inform the master that the slave cannot support the requested uh, action. 
So, uh, Modbus Guys is a pretty simple protocol. You can implement it pretty easily. It doesn't require lots of effort into the programming. And um, in the next video, we will try to actually implement Modbus in Atmel um, SAM 3X or microcontrollers. And in this microcontroller, we'll try to build a library where it can use multiple ports inside the microcontroller. So it's pretty standard that every microcontroller produced by Atmel in the ARM family contains more than one uh, USART port. And uh, the microcontroller that I'm going to use contains five. And I'm trying to build a library that can use and utilize all of those five ports. So if I want to build a, uh, a product that can communicate over Modbus using one of those ports as a master and also at the same time act as a slave on another port, then I would be able to do that using this library. So this is not a tutorial. This is just a way to show you that it is possible and not very hard to, to implement Modbus in one of your products. So wait for the next video until we actually are going to code the uh, microcontroller and try to build the library plot by plot. Until we meet in the next video, bye-bye.